Professor Eric Maskin from Harvard, uh, Economy Nobel Prize, 2007. Thank you very much for your time, sir. My pleasure. And my pleasure, certainly. Um, you won the, Nobel, the, the Economic Nobel Prize, 2007. A year later, the crisis, the crisis uh, erupted in the uh, in United States. Then uh, the European contagion. We still suffer in the European contagion. Um, and you've been studying, I, I guess that every economist has been studying the, the crisis well, it's, in it's general. It's uh, a topic that everyone in the world is interested in, and, and so it's natural that economists should, of, should give it some thought. Absolutely. Um, I guess that you, you, you personally as economists have identified the reasons of the crisis, the origins. But the question, the question is, are you still learning or is the politicians who hasn't learned anything? Well, of course, there is plenty for economists still to learn about. Uh, it, it would be presumptuous to say that we, we know everything there is uh, to know about financial crises and why they occur. Uh, nevertheless, I think we have learned some things which uh, politicians have not yet absorbed, uh, and so there's a risk, unfortunately, that we will make the same mistakes again uh, some years from now that led us into this most recent crisis. Even in the United States? Even in the United States. I, I don't think that this will happen very soon because the, the crisis occurred mainly because uh, of, of leverage. Le leverage ratios were very, very high, dangerously high, uh, and at the moment, they're not high. Uh, le leverage is quite low uh, for most financial institutions. So the risk of having a repeat of 2008, 2009 in the near future is, is very low. However, there will be a time when the American economy has recovered, when the world economy has recovered, and leverage goes up again. And that's when we have to worry that the same mistakes could occur again. Uh, I hope they won't be. Uh, there are things we could do to stop that sort of thing from happening, or at least reducing the likelihood. Uh, but it will be up to politicians to make sure that, that these things do happen. Now, tell me, um, from your perspective as an economist, uh, was that a mistake to let Lehman Brothers fall? A lot of people, of course, blame the crisis on the government of letting Lehman Brothers well, fall. Well, it, it certainly was a mistake to let Lehman Brothers fall because that failure created a domino effect. There was a panic, and because of Lehman Brothers' failure, lots of other uh, financial institutions got into trouble. However, even without Lehman Brothers failing, even if it had been rescued, there was still a very serious problem, and, and, and it would be uh, uh, an exaggeration. It would be misleading to say that we would not have had a serious crisis had Lehman Brothers been rescued. We were on the road uh, at that point to a very difficult time, and Lehman Brothers made it worse, but it, it didn't. Uh, it did. It wasn't the main cause. Right now, what is it that um, Europe? Because this thing in Europe has been going for so long that right. really, I mean, I, I for one, uh, lose perspective of the thing. So, what is it that Europe hasn't done that the United States did? That allegedly uh, a major United States kind of like emerged sooner, if we can say it emerged. Well, in uh, in one word, uh, uh, stimulus. Uh, the, the, the U.S., once the crisis occurred and once the recession occurred, uh, recognized that there was, a, there was a significant drop in consumer demand. Pe people were poor. They weren't going to be able to spend what they had been spending before the crisis. There, were, there was a big drop in consumer demand. The risk was with the drop in consumer demand that there would be a drop in production, which would lead to greater unemployment uh, and, the, and a downward cycle. And in fact, we saw 
a downward cycle in the beginning of 2009, but then the U.S. government stepped in uh, and spent $700 billion, $800 billion trying to reverse the cycle. Uh, there are many economists who argue that the stimulus wasn't large enough, uh, but the point is that it was big enough to stop the, uh, the most serious risk, which was to go into a major depression. And as a result of that action and uh, the actions that the Federal Reserve Bank took, uh, relaxing uh, uh, quantitative, poli uh, quantitative policy, making sure interest rates were low, uh, making sure there was plenty of liquidity, that combination of policy uh, uh, worked. It didn't work uh, as quickly and, uh, and as effectively as we might have liked, but it did work. Mm -hmm. And because Europe did not follow uh, that course of action, they are still struggling of more. Of course. Now, um, uh, um, uh, um, Greenspan, Alan Greenspan, the former chairman of uh, the Federal Reserve, of course he defends his uh, actions and, uh, and uh, he, he says that, uh, that, well he defends the, the kind of, the, the, the amount of leverage that the banks has had. Yeah. He said that it was necessary for the growth of the country, uh, of the economy. And also, I mean, there's a lot of uh, voices that defend the derivatives and all these uh, complex instruments yeah. precisely because right. they say that they help to, to make the, the economy to grow. So I guess my question is, how should a financial sector would be in the future that supports strong growth without imbalances that it eventually will lead to a crisis? Right, well, uh, there is a trade-off that you have to make. Uh, there, there's no question that there's a, there's a balancing act that has to be achieved to get both good growth and uh, some financial stability. Uh, I'm not opposed to leverage. Le leverage is uh, a very useful tool for expanding the, uh, the financial uh, support for worthwhile investments. If, 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 if a bank doesn't have enough money itself to invest in a worthwhile project, it can borrow money from other financial institutions and put it into this uh, investment, and, and the investment is where growth comes from. Uh, that's, that's how it should be, and, and that's how we get growth. The problem is that banks have a natural tendency to take on too much leverage uh, for, for the good of the system. That is, if, if I'm a bank, uh, I don't take into account the fact that raising my leverage ratio is going to make your bank uh, shakier. Uh, I, I have no incentive to take into account the risk that I'm imposing on your bank, and so uh, I take on too much leverage, y you take on too much leverage, all banks take on too much leverage, there has to be some mechanism in place for keeping leverage at a safe, at a, at a, at a safe level. Now what is that safe level? Well, history suggests that leverage ratio somewhere between uh, 15 to 1 and 20 to 1 work pretty well. Uh, but in the run-up to the big financial crisis of uh, 2009, we were seeing leverage ratios of 30 to 1, 40 to 1, 50 to 1. Those we can see were, were just too high. So it should be the role of government. It should, such as the Federal Reserve, other regulatory agencies, to keep leverage ratios, not to eliminate leverage, but to keep leverage ratios at these historically safe ratios of 15 to 1, 20 to 1. We, we in fact, had a period uh, of almost 40 years from the end of the Great Depression to the deregulation of the 1980s where 
leverage did stay within the, those parameters, and there were no financial crises to speak of, at least nothing nearly on mm -hmm. the scale of the recent crisis, and there was also good growth. So, so we, we have a historical experience that shows that the balance is possible. Interesting. Now, uh, the new government, Barack Obama, when he arrived, he said that the problem was precisely regulation, and then he will uh, precisely also yeah. support more regulation for right. Wall Street. Was he right, and did he, did, did, had he, has he done something or anything enough? Uh, he, he, he was right that, that the crisis was uh, caused by a failure of regulation, um, and there, were, there was uh, an important measure passed uh, during his administration, uh, the Dodd-Frank Act, which um, is an improvement in, in regulation. It, it, it does give uh, regulators more power and, and more responsibility for keeping leverage down, particularly in big banks. Mm -hmm. uh, does it go far enough? No. No, I, I, I think the Dodd-Frank Act is definitely a step in the right direction, but it is not sufficient to, pre to prevent future financial crises. So more work needs to be done. Now, for the next four years, it's not a political question, it's an economic question. Barack Obama, Mitt Romney, does it really matter? I think it does matter. Uh, the, there are some important differences between the two. Uh, uh, Romney's policy for, uh, for getting the economy back on track uh, seems to be, as far as we can tell, because he hasn't provided all the details, uh, uh, cutting taxes and, and also uh, cutting uh, government spending uh, dramatically to, uh, to try to reduce uh, deficits. Uh, I think the, uh, the tax cut parts makes a lot of sense at the moment because the economy is still uh, quite far from full employment and you want to make sure that, that consumer demand remains strong uh, at a time when we're not uh, operating at, at full capacity. Uh, but cutting the, the, the government's spending cuts that he's proposing, I think, are counterproductive because they, they feed into the, uh, uh, the, the, the risk of, uh, of another recession. So uh, uh, what Obama is proposing, which is uh, uh, reducing taxes on uh, middle-income people, or at least keeping the tax rates for middle-income people low, uh, not cutting government spending, and financing the, uh, that spending by uh, raising taxes on the rich, I think has a better chance at getting us to a full of employment economy uh, more quickly than, than Romney's plan. Eric Masking, professor of Harvard, uh, Economic Nobel Prize 2007. Thank you very much for your time, sir. A pleasure. Nice talking to you.